everything about Chung Lee. He was like really entertaining to me. I liked when he threw the like cocaine and John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> what? Cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> it's the 80s. I'm assuming it was cocaine. Mike needs, to, Mike needs to make this viral. No way. She said cocaine. <laughs> I know it was an 80s movie, but <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Heroes Peak Podcast. I am your host, Chris, and we are here to talk about entertainment, the culture, and whatever the hell we feel like. And today, to talk about what we feel like with me today, Mr. I Don't Do My Homework, it's James. How you doing, James? Doing okay. Happy Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, all our Asian folks, friends, family, loved ones. Year of the Tiger? I see tigers all over the place. Is it the Year of the Tiger? Year of the Tiger. Yeah, right. not as good as Year of the Dragon for those of us born in '76. Yeah, Shout I was a Year of the Snake. The '77 is that what '77 is? Yep. Yep. Okay, that works. That works. Hmm. Slytherin folk. Snake, snake is just a baby dragon with no wings. But but snakes are alive, so give us give us points for that. So speaking of that, Brooksy, how you doing? <laughs> Alive, I guess. Alive, like, <laughs> like the rest of us snakes. Like the rest of the snakes, yep, alive. All right, so we got three things on our on our discussion list today. We're gonna first, we're gonna talk about the NFL playoffs a bit. Not very much, not much to say, but the Chiefs choked. Um, then we're gonna do a a new, fun, interesting. I don't know how it's gonna work yet, so stay with us. We're going to do sort of a face off of movies, 80s, 90s movies, or whatever, that one two people have not seen. So <laughs> we made Brooksy finally go back to the 1988 vault and watch Bloodsport. And Keith, Keith, ugh, Keith dropped, sorry. And James, James had to go back and was supposed to watch Heathers, the uh, cult comedy classic. Only making a million dollars in the box office. How scary is that? And then we'll have a full group discussion of The Witcher Season 2, a wonderful uh, Netflix series. So let's start with the NFL playoffs. So we had the Cincinnati Bengals versus the, versus the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And surprise, surprise to everybody but Joe Burrow, apparently, mm. is the uh, Cincinnati Bengals pulled it out. After uh, looking like they were down and out, 21 to 3. 20 point leads are nothing in the NFL these days. What did you guys think of that crazy ass game? Well, I would like to point out that it is the year of the Tiger. So I don't know if that means oh. Oh, the right. Bengals are going to win it all. Um, but I would also like to say that I really thoroughly enjoyed that game because as a Raiders fan, fuck the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go and uh james your son and my son are both Bengals fans so you probably heard as much yeah i haven't I seen him that animated i think he dropped a, a curse word by accident here and there but um <laughs> yeah like his dude was animated i was shocked and props to him being probably one of the few loyal fans and well his mom too very loyal fans of uh teams um he stuck with it when they were trash since he was like three years old and Year after year, and he said, "Oh, Joe Burrow." I was like, "How the hell you know Joe Burrow? Have you been watching NFL games?" Oh, he, he has been watching, which I didn't realize that. So he was yeah, extremely was... excited because I was talking shit when they were down twenty to three. I was on my I way know, back I saw from it the on city, the text chat. and then he was quiet. He didn't say anything, and by the time I got home, that's right, that's right when they tied the game. And then he was like, "Who they? Who they? Who they?" In my face, I was like, <laughs> "Be easy, kid. Be easy." <laughs> yeah, was, thanks for your thanks for your jinx, Dad. These and you guys know that how that works. All right, so Keith has texted that he is here in the chat, but I don't see him or hear him. Do you guys see or hear him? I can see Keith. Yeah, I can see Keith. You can. Uh, yeah. Can. Oh man, because I'm logged in. I'm logged in through Mike. Same issue we had last time when only Mike could see and hear him. Yeah. So we might have to pause and reestablish this. Connection. Yeah. It says Keith is offline. Yeah. All right. Keith, so let me Keith. pause. 
All right, we're recording. Woo, we're trying again. All right. And we, I just said, oh. So, James, you just com- finished talking about... Uh, Eric being a diehard Bengals fan, blah, 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 hoop de hoop All right, Keith, what did you think of the uh, Chiefs losing in spectacular fashion, like only they can do, with so much hype behind them? Yeah, I, I feel like really... Chief, chief, the 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 Chiefs are probably the most entertaining, the the most entertaining team in football. But they're kind of like Harlem Globetrottery. <laughs> yeah, the the diving throws and the flips and the You're like it's that's and the, it, that's not always going to get you all the way to the top of the mountain. Like you know what I'm saying, like I think like. I think he takes his he he goes too far with like you mean Mahomes right we say he yeah Mahomes. he goes too far with the like you know the trick plays and the like yo man you about to lose <laughs> this game bro like <laughs> like like my you might just want to stick to the X's and O's and just like you know what I'm saying but I feel like like they he they lost that game. They lost that game. They gave that game away. They lost that game. I'm going to call out two things that I saw. Number one, once once that stop at the at the half, like just before the half, when you're like, wait, what happened? The half is here? No one scored? Why the hell did they kick a field goal? Like that changed the entire game. I don't know what happened, but like the Chiefs were like, I guess we don't get to score anymore. <laughs> And number two, like, Joe Burrow does not. They talk about Matty Ice. I remember the classic Matty Ice. This guy's cold. Yeah, I He's remember. always, like, this guy does not get shaken. This guy stepping in, stepping up, running around, dropping, defend, like, scooching through defender tackles. Like, that guy was amazing. And the third thing I'll call out is the, the, the uh, Bengals defensive line. Whatever they did, or whatever the decisions they made at in the half second time. half, yeah, they kept him in check behind the behind the line, and they got to give that coaching, man. That's got to be coaching too. Coaching, and then you got to pull it off. Like either the defensive coaching and that line really kept it, kept Mahomes um, in check. They didn't let him do his magic. All right, now the uh, the other game. That no one cared about, right? No one yeah, cared Rams. about. <laughs> nah, the Rams versus the 49ers. Jeff, Jeff Garcia cared about this a lot, and he got his ass kicked for it. Um, So Jimmy G goes out there and stinks up the place when he's needed the most at the last for the last drive. He just can't can't pull it off. And that defensive front, that looks like the, the, the Super Bowl winning type of defensive front for the Rams, mm-hmm. guys. What do you think? You're putting money in Rams win the Super Bowl, I think, you know, which is a smart bet according to Vegas. But going back to what you said about um, Joe Burrow and the Burr, Vegas Joe comparisons, this dude's a winner, man. He's won, he's won at every level. So, and it, most of the time it's deep. I mean, most of the time you hear defense win championships, but the NFL sometimes an overpowering talent and a good quarterback will win just as many championships as. You know, the defense that the Giants did or the Seahawks did in years past, you know, you have a, a calm quarterback with a team that believes in him. You can beat a pretty good defense as well. So, but again, I'm not, I'm not giving my predictions, you know, because I have people that. invested in who wins. You don't want to set, set the world on fire. So this is not, this is, whatever my opinions right now do not represent um, James Labsteel. James, right? <laughs> wow. Just talking, just talking, guys. Just right. talking. All right, Keith. <laughs> What do you what do you think? What do you think of the Rams 49ers game? But I mean, before I even get into in that, like Brooks, are <clears throat> are you partial to the Rams at all? I am. I am partial to the Rams. Oh, we and... didn't lose Brooks, did we? Did we lose Brooks? Yeah, no, I'm here. <laughs> mm, I can't hear okay, her. well, I pulled that back. I really had no emotional investment in that particular <laughs> in that in that series. Or I should say that game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm kind of glad that 
yo, your your, your guy is he, like he, he's not it, yo. And for all of that back and forth with Mina Kimes and this, that, and the other, like he kind of got to pull it off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like, to have all those people defend you. You have to back you them. Got to pull it off, like because now it because now you okay. This she is. Um, cause now you look like you know, Boo Boo the Fool, like now, you know what I'm saying? Like now you look like you were just lashing out because you know you was trash. You're trash. Like, you, like she said, like <laughs> you pretty much, the defense have been dragging you along. Like you're trash. Like, sorry. And that happens. I mean, there are Super Bowl winning teams where the, where the quarterback was just kind of dragged along for the ride. Right. But you I think what you what a great defense needs is they keep the game close and they just need that one drive, that last drive. The two AKA minutes. Eli Manning and the Giants in 08. Yes. The defense or, for three and a half quarters kept us in the game against the Pats until Eli had to come up with something. And then you're game. like, dude, you got to pull magic, something. And that's what Joe Burrow ended up doing, except – like he had to pull like four touchdowns out of his, or like <laughs> four, four drives out. But you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. the thing. Good that's, point. It's a good point. That's what they need: a, a decent quarterback that wins a championship, the defense holds, and then they pull the last minute drive. Brady did how many last minute drives? Right. A great quarterback will pull. Will when the defense isn't doing great, they'll pull them back in and let the defense then catch up. Right, right. So there you go. All right, Brooks. What did you think? All right. So my boyfriend is a Rams fan. So Mm. we are a Remaiders household. Remaiders. 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 Yes. Um. So I was emotionally invested in the game. Um. Also, I think like it's super interesting, like to watch the Rams play the Super Bowl at SoFi at their home. You know what I mean? I think that's like, I don't know. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to do a lot for football in LA. Um, And fun fact, that's only the second time ever that the home team has played in the Super Bowl. And the last time that happened was? Last year. Last year. Correct. (laughs) Crazy. Isn't that crazy? crazy. So it's becoming a trend now. So it's Apparently it's a thing to do now. Yeah. So yeah. I, it, why, aren't you a, why aren't you a Rams fan? Because I was born a Raiders fan. Because they were the LA Raiders when I was growing up. Born a Raiders fan. Raiders. I mean, they played in, I, I think I just looked this up too. They played in LA from like 82 to 94. So like my, cha- you, you know. You should have seen it, guys. She came out black and silver. I don't know. You just can't explain it. <laughs> no, but also like with NWA. The spikes. It was big, like NWA. Her poor mom. Players. She came out with the spiked shoulder pads and the. Stop. You said NWA. Stop, stop, stop. And when I was growing up, like NWA was like they repped the Raiders, so it was really big in LA. You know what I mean? Right. All right. So like I have Yankees one question. Cat. One question before we end this NFL talk, and it's not who's going to win. My question is, what is your favorite NFL player in a movie cameo? Or full role, I guess, if you want to go with that. Hmm. Oh, it's a... Can I go first real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Any given Sunday, my man of the Giants, freaking uh, LT. LT. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor? And they gave him a good meaty chunk role too when he was like that old cranky retired football player who trying to get these young guys to go out there and bust their heads. And he was he just perfect perfect casting, perfect cameo. LT, any given Sunday. All right. Gosh. Any can you guys think of one? I can give you a couple mm-hmm. of options. I need some options. So, uh, we hate to say the name, but O.J. Simpson in Naked Gun. <laughs> Dude. O.J. I was laughed. Actually, he, was he was very great. funny. He was, yeah, he was, he was number two in those roles. All right. Number two, Another number real meaty role is Bubba Smith in the Police Academy films. Bubba! Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was great. He was great. 
Okay, uh, Carl Weathers in like a million things. Apparently, Brooksy, he was a Raider when he played his one year. I did not player. know that. I'm looking Ooh. at that right now. Carl, Carl, Carl Weathers. Weathers. Carl Weathers. Was a the linebacker dad, so... for the Raiders. Maybe. No, Carl the... Weathers, Apollo Creed, Keith. Oh, 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 Apollo oh, Creed. Oh, oh. Uh, you're, you're thinking uh, of uh, Predator. Family Matters. Oh, you're, thinking of, <laughs> you're thinking of Family like, Matters, Carl. I was like, he did what? <laughs> you now I want to see that dude on the back, back line of the Raiders. Carl Weathers. I did not know that about him. And actually, one of my favorites is actually Dan Marino in Ace Ventura. Yes. Oh, wait. What's his name, too? The comedian cat from... Um, I mean, well, not comedian. He just plays funny roles. Um, from White Chicks. Oh, Terry Crews. Yes. Terry Crews. Yeah, there you Terry go. Terry Crews. How about uh, wasn't Brian? Gronk, wasn't Gronk? Wasn't Gronkowski in something? Yeah, no. it's it's on the list here. Um, you, you too. I feel like Gronkowski was on. I something. can't remember what it is. Um, do you guys remember Brian Bosworth? Nope. No, no. The Boz? Oh, he wasn't he a Raider? Wasn't Brian Bosworth a Raider? Um. Obviously not a good one. <laughs> yeah. He was in The Longest Yard. I liked that movie a lot. Is it a cameo, though? Because a lot of cameos. When it was, he played for the movie. Seattle Seahawks. Okay, Bryce Brosworth was a Seahawk. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just, I was just having fun looking at that. And I just remember I, I would have. Would say O.J. Simpson if it wasn't. So yeah, O.J. Oh, and Jim Brown. Hold on, I Jim forgot Brown. Jim Brown. I apologize, cool. SU alumni. I apologize. Uh, um, apparently, yeah, Dirty Bert, Dozen. Burt Reynolds played football. Are you serious? Really? <laughs> a lot of these like one year dudes. Yeah, that dude lived a life, yo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dude, he Burt sure Reynolds. Did. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of man. Smokey and the Bandit, classic. Classic, yeah. I have to admit that. Oh, Bill Romanowski. Was he a Raider? Bill yes, Romanowski? he was. Yeah. Okay, so I was confusing Bosworth with Romanowski. They probably look alike. Yeah, Yeah. Jim Brown probably the highest one out of everybody here. No, Carl Weathers had the full career. Oh, yeah, that's true. He just had the yeah, shortest Carl football Weathers. career. Right. Longest acting career all right all right You're so we will better acting too yeah yeah we'll move on we'll do a a quick face off and then we'll take a break and then we'll talk witcher 2 how about that guys sounds good all right but let's take a break now before we do the quick face off you know i gotta put my mic hat hat on uh, let's take a break before we do the face all right all right well we'll do a, a 30 second break and we'll be right back all right stay, stay. Here. All right, we're back, and we're here for the, the funky little face-off here. And uh, the two movies, two people have not watched. It was a dreadful conversation to find out that somehow Keith, not Keith, because we, we, we have, we have yeah. other Both things. Both guys don't look alike. Definitely not you two. Me, me and Keith have stuff we have. Hey, hey, watch, hey. So I think we are the next, next up for grabs. Yeah, you two here. guys are next. Yeah. But what James has not watched is Heather's, Heathers. which is a cult classic, a 1988 cult classic. And he, for a while, for a very long time, he's been trying to get Brooks to watch Bloodsport, which is also a 19, 1988 action movie. So this is a and Van also- Dam versus Christian Slater movie. So, what did you guys think? Let's start with Brooksy, because we've been uh, trying to get you to watch this for a long time. What did you think of this classic? I was really expecting this to be, like, the top gun of the fighting (laughs) world. I don't know why, but that's what it was going to be like in my head for some reason. Can I ask you how many Van Damme movies you've watched in general? Like, Uh, Like, in how much experience did you have with Jean-Claude Van Damme? Oh, on purpose, none. But maybe like one or two 
by accident. All right. So, so you weren't were you fully unprepared for this movie. Fully unprepared. I mean, I have definitely seen Bloodsport memes for sure. And I've heard references. So like, yeah, especially that one. So I'm not like, unfamiliar i mean i guess i was unfamiliar with the movie i don't know what i was expecting but really like i was expecting some top gun level quality acting i don't know why mm. from john claude van damme really scott come on really scott what, what did you not do um and i was a little disappointed i will say that was is it like was it like the opening? Was it like the 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 terribly looking dub opening? She's yeah, she's watching it with today eyes. With the little yeah. kid, with the little kid stealing the sword, or was it like just the 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 cheesy friendship, the 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 street chase, the, the love story was really the the love story again. Come on, I'm man! This like top gun level love story and like like first of all this chick is like trying so hard to get into this fight right and then john claude van damme is like you can't get in sorry and then the second she gets in she turns around and tells the fucking police on everybody like, <laughs> like turn level like bullshit right there very karen -y. Very corny. <laughs> yeah, like you just you you are dying. Like she's sitting there trying to seduce all of these fighters to get into this fight, and then then gets in on her own. So like, why did you need to try to seduce all these people to get in? And then fight in, like, calls the cops. Like who she's are the world's you? worst journalist by the way, but go ahead. The world, like, yeah, you can't, you are begging these people to, and then you like figure it out on your own somehow. I don't know. Um, I also, uh, what the hell is wow. his name? That She's like- got notes. Go ahead. Oh, I do. Um, I did take some notes over here. Um, okay. Oh, okay, I'm I'm officially changing the doesn't do their homework tag is not Brooksy anymore. She is now you. leveled up. She is Wait. taking notes. She is the I best in class. <laughs> Taking notes. Hold on. I do need to pause for one second, though, because I have to plug in my charger. Um, so, okay, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I, I meant to ask her before, when she gets back on, what does she think of the fight choreography? I know we'll get to that, but to me, that's like the crux of the movie. Like, You could argue about the characters and the terrible dialogue and the cheesy 80s. Um, but did you at least enjoy the fight choreography? I did. I did enjoy the fight choreography. I will say that definitely saved the movie a lot. Also, like, I'm into 80s movies, you know? So I did enjoy the, like, cheesy dialogue. But it was, like, it, it, I don't know. It was a little far. Like, what's his name that, like, ugh, I have it written down. What is his name? The, like, big dude that is in the hospital at the end and he's, like, drinking beer in his hospital bed. Ray Jackson, Ray Jackson, also from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, was he? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was Og Ogre. Ogre. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. He was like, I mean, he was so typical 80s. So it was like really a, just kind of amusing for him to watch, right? Like first he comes in and I don't know. And then all of a sudden him and John claude Van Damme are like, best friends and they'll like go to the end of the earth for each other and i'm like i didn't get that relationship build up it was like one day they were against each other and the next day they were like homies for life i don't know <laughs> that's typical 80s though that's, that's, that's typical the 80s. 80s i mean if you think about like maverick and goose and their friendship and how like pure and built up it was but theirs know. is also pre-established. They're friends sure. when you start the movie. This is a they find they meet each other and it bam. They're, yeah. they're you're right. They're immediately friends for life. Yeah. Because he got his ass kicked. Right. Like all of a sudden. And our, like Jean Claude Van Damme is like in the American army and then but he's not American, but he's like represent like yeah. he's all just ignoring the fact that he's not American and has an accent. Okay. Whoa, whoa, you, you sound you, very xenophobic there. Did, he did was you, American did you, born. This, did you, there's tons of there's tons of non Americans in the army. No, no, yeah. but did you see at the end of the, the movie flashback. the the credits that Frank Dukes isn't a real person? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So. Yeah, but they also show you the flashbacks. He's lived in America since, you know, his parents brought him over from right. whatever Belgium to do wine. So he's been in America since he was a kid. He's basically an American, American citizen with a terrible accent. Yes, I know. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but with the horrible accent. I don't know. But then he like goes rogue from the army to like go to Japan to for this fight and for then the tournament. for the tournament, right? The Kumite or whatever. Have China. You Kute, Kute. Hong Kong, China. Isn't he in Japan? Aren't they in Japan? Mm-hmm. Nope, he's not China. in Japan. China he's not a Street Fighter. Oh. Does he go to no, I have written down that he goes to <laughs> I have written down that he goes to Japan, but then it says he go. Then they go to Hong Kong. So maybe he went to Japan first, or he studied. Oh, he did. He went to Japan to see his master. My, my yes. bad. It's sensei. You're there right. You Shidoshi. Oh, Shidoshi. That's right. You're Thank correct. You. Shidoshi. Thank you. She took notes. I took notes. She took notes. Right yeah. here. She just had them in a wrong Okay. Order. What was your what favorite you part of this movie? Thanks. Um, I kind of liked when, um, the, I liked everything about Chung Lee. He was like really entertaining to me. I liked when he threw the like cocaine and John claude Van Damme. <laughs> what? Cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> it's the eighties. I'm assuming it was cocaine. Mike needs, to, Mike needs to make this viral. No way. She said cocaine. I know it was an eighties movie, but hell. <laughs> Cocaine from his jock strap <laughs> and just throws it in his face. And then he's like, I'm blind. I'm blind. And it was like, yeah, like the worst acting ever. And it was, but it was just like so 80s, you know? I used to reenact that scene every freaking. My, my week. favorite thing in showing my kids movies like this is when they go, oh, that's the meme. Yeah. I did yes. that a lot for this movie for sure. Yeah. All right. So, so a classic piece of Van Damme cinema are are like two things. There's his split where like you see his ass, like that his bare ass in a split is something yeah. that happens in almost every movie he's in. That was unnecessary when I had to see his ass. Yeah. So this is the chair one, right? Bloodsport is the chair one where he's between the two chairs and basically He do it many times. Yeah. The chair was probably the, the first first shot you see. Right, in the right. And then there's the his special helicopter kick. Speaking of his splits, so and that's the, like the triple, like they play the same shot, the same kick like three times. Yeah, yeah. it's like Ryu and Ken in Street Fighter. It's, like. it's, yeah. it's his ultimate finishing move, WWF style. But it, yeah, but it doesn't, oh, it doesn't, it will, it's not, it's never the last move though. <laughs> <laughs> but it, once he does it, he's winning. Like, He's winning. It's like when Hulk Hogan starts doing the right. Yeah, there you know, you, go. you know it's over. The match is over. That's wow. Right. So, all right. So, what would you grade Bloodsport on an '80s scale of '80s movies? Because you got yeah, watch. '80s, not 2022. Yeah. I I feel like I get why this is an '80s classic for sure. It had all the like quintessential '80s moments. So, um, I think I'll go B plus. Wow, that's, that's a good. That's movie. higher than I thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, passing along to James, Mister. I didn't do my homework. He was supposed to watch Heather's again. Come on, man. I, had, I had one or two bad weeks. Look this, at my record. I know. My I, resume. This, this is a 90, 1988 uh, cult classic starring Christian Slater and Winona Ryder. It's a high school comedy, a la uh, Mean Girls. Larry, Hughes in the 80s, but a little darker. Uh, much darker than John Hughes. This is this was amazing. So, what did you think of this movie, of what you saw? All right, I have to admit that I was shocked that I didn't see this movie before, because a lot of the stuff that I saw in this movie was reminiscing of many other movies I used to watch in the late 80s, or on repeat in the early 90s on um, CW Channel 11 in New York, New Jersey. Um, Actually, some good cast here. Christian Slater, who did a lot of the early 80s. And still has an adult, he does some movies. Mr. Robot's probably his um, most critically well-known role at the moment. Winona Ryder, who I had a huge crush on when I was growing up um, through the 90s, through the mid-90s. Um, what's her name? I think Shannon Doherty from... Yeah, Shannon yep. Doherty. 90210, right? 90210. Um, a couple of a C-list actors. I also saw in the background at the school... 
Um, so that's I start with that. The movie itself, I think the the, the dialogue and, and script writing for the actors I thought was kind of weak. But I did get the message that they're really trying to point. It's about teenage bullying and suicide. And I watched 13 Reasons Why um, the stream was beating. My daughter was beating me in my head about it when it first came out on Netflix. And I saw a lot of that messaging from, what was that, 2019 when that show mm-hmm. first came out? Versus this 1988, 89 movie. Just a slight just, difference in attitude. Just a slight different attitude and a comedic tone. Um. So I didn't get to finish it, full disclosure. I went online and, and saw what happened in the last 10, 15 minutes. Um, I found it kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Although I think it's not PC today. A lot of the jokes are no longer you considered. think you know. it's not PC today? All right. It's not PC today. A lot Dude, of, of jokes these two not, movies, this one would days. not play. This one does yeah. not hold that well. Yeah. Yeah. This Surprisingly. Is not, yeah. Over mean, one called Bloodsport, you would think that would be the one that would not hold up well. But nope. Yeah. I mean, the worst thing that happened in Bloodsport was a dude got a leg broken um, or got killed in the ring. No, but no, no. The was... worst, the worst thing that happened in Bloodsport was the was the split punch up to the up to his. Crime. But that dude lived. <laughs> he didn't get his head snapped in by Chung Lee and then tossed to the, in the middle oh, of the ring. Oh yeah, I got it. Yeah, whatever. So, <laughs> although people did die in this movie in terrible fashion, oh, with my a God. horrific homophobic funeral taking place right after that. I um, love my dead gay son. <laughs> he buried him in his football. He buried him in his football helmet and a football in his hand. I'm like, what? so good. It's so classic. I know. Oh my god. Um. So you know what? Thank you, Brooks, for recommending this movie. I did enjoy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, good. That's that's my take. Chris. It's okay. definitely like my we were. I was watching it with my boyfriend. I made him start. He got about halfway through and was like, "Nope, I'm good." But he was like, "What is this?" And then uh, the very first like see, not scene, but the very first um, death when they make the like lead Heather drink Drano. Drink the Heather. Drano, yeah, 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 yeah. And she like he's like, "What the fuck is <laughs> happening?" <laughs> like because he I started like ahead, typical ahead. you know '80s like teen movie. And I was like, "Oh no!" I, I knew it was serious when Christian Slater shot those um, those blank the guns at the two kids in the cafeteria. They're they yeah. bullying him. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, right? That's that's perfectly normal. You might get suspended. Like, what right. the might hell? Get suspended. That's what I knew. This movie was uh, darker than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I, this is definitely definitely. Like the darkest take on these type, and, of and I can see how this became a cult classic in the late '80s because we were starting to move towards the darker, like the Crow, the early oh, '90s yeah, yeah. grunge. This movie was probably right at the at the yeah. precipice of the downward spiral of young teenage angst in America. So it was perfect True. timing. Um, yeah, and the writer went on to get to do Batman Returns, another dark, oh, um, one of my favorites. Yeah, he did Batman Returns. And that shit was dark. All right, comedic. What is your 1988 grade for Heathers? Without seeing the ending, I'd give it an incomplete, but right now, I'll give it a solid B. I'll give it a solid B. It was entertaining. I did not feel like skipping anything, or I was not bored. It was just funny, and I was entertained. Do, do you guys remember the song, The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun? No. Oh, my God. I remember What's Your Name's Got a Gun. So... Janie's got a gun from Aerosmith. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Thank you, Aerosmith. No, no, no. We so, and, and Jeremy uh, spoken, Pearl Jam. Jeremy spoken in class today. Um, no, this is a this is a classic kind of a comedy song. Um, it just goes along with the same the same idea that that you can say things and do things about schools, and it wasn't considered like dangerous. Like, because we were in college and we were playing all these comedy albums with all this, all this kind of stuff, and that was just one of the uh, the ones we were playing. And it just reminds me; it's in the same vein, you know. The world is a little different today. You know, in the beginning, I kind of thought that perhaps Christian Slater's character was in her head, like kind of like um oh Fight, Fight Club, Club style. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought until I started. Oh. Until I realized, no, he act, he actually does exist in this world because he's not like. Because something about him was just off from the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely off. He's right. He All goes right. to suicide, murder, like across the high school. I would say he's off. 
All right. So everybody, uh, we're going to try to do this. Tell us what you think of, of us going back and, and finding these eighties and nineties classics that we might've missed. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll try to pick it up and, and see, see what people think of, of, of going way, way back in the, in the time scales in our yeah, time comment time. on this, on this yeah. podcast that's published. Go. So next up would be Chris and Keith. Yeah. No, I think this... Mike and Keith. Oh, Chris and Keith. My bad. Yeah, you're right. Chris well, and it was Mike and Keith. I'm trying to remember which one we came up with that we hadn't watched. Um, I'd have to look at our, our conversation. We had a couple days ago, unfortunately. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, going back and finding it through like 10,000 text chats. Wow. We'll figure it out again, I'm sure. Uh, all right. So we're going to take 30 seconds. We'll be back. And we're going to talk about The Witcher Season 2. The Witcher. All right. So we're here to talk about Witcher Season 2. Witcher uh, is the... This is the second season of the Witcher TV series on Netflix. The um, Let's see here. We are starring... I had it all brought up. Henry Cavill, uh, Freya Allen, Anya Chalotra, and Mimi and Winnie, and a whole host of other great actors returning, a lot of returning actors from the first season, about uh, Henry Cavill's Witcher, who is a uh, demon hunter, and he takes young Siri under his wing and trains her because he doesn't actually know what the hell her purpose is, and he's, she's got to protect herself. And uh, it goes from there, as we have the, a good season of television here. If you like the first season of The Witcher, you're going to like this season of The Witcher. We're going to go into spoilers. We're not leaving anything on the table. So if you care about spoilers, watch the series come back. If you don't care about spoilers, just sit and listen, obviously, or if you've already seen it. So I'm going to start with Keith. What did you think of this second season, Keith, uh, especially compared I, to the first season? I liked it, and I actually think that it was better than the first season. Okay. Um, here, I, here, here, here. It, it actually made me, and it's in a weird way, it made me appreciate the first season a little bit better, actually. But they, I, I feel like they, they, work, they worked more on storyline for this series for the for the second season like like the storyline felt better the 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 character development felt a little bit uh, a little bit a little bit better like it just felt like a better show this this um second season um man i mean it 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 has all of the elements of the things that i like in a show so <laughs> <laughs> off top but like um, Henry Cavill, what is it? Henry Cavill, right? The mm-hmm. um, Superman, not anymore. But Superman. Yeah, I felt like his. Like I didn't really l- like his portrayal. I didn't like his acting of it in the first one, but it felt better in this one. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. Like this season. Um, well, he got to be a bit more. Fa- Big brothery. Yeah, it seems like the, you 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 got more things from that character. Like you got more from that character. More emotions. More you saw more sides. Like yeah, definitely like, oh, more just range. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. yeah, I like the relationship. I, I I like how he softened into the relationship with him and um. I Siri. 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 Mm-hmm. And. I I, I love I love the spin about how powerful she is. I love the I love the I, I I just yeah. This was a I think this was a very this almost this almost could have been the first season. It should have been the first season. Like <laughs> like I think it could have just started from there. Like this was it almost seems like a a, a different show in a way. Yeah. All right, James. What did you think of the second season? I mean, I, I agree with Keith. Um, I think that I was mediocre. I think I probably had the lowest score out of the crew here when we reviewed the first season. Because um, A, I watched it later than you guys. And B, I thought maybe it was overhyped. 
and C, there was some flaws that we could all agree, you know, even despite that it was still a good show. This season, I thought they corrected a lot of the flaws. They were tight on the writing. I actually think the production was better, and I think I was messaging you, Chris. It felt like they put a lot more money in the scenes and sets, like Game of Thrones feel, like HBO, HBO Max, although there was less action and less battles. When you look at season one versus season two, there was a lot more action battle sequences than season two. However, season two felt to me like there was more money spent on the production of the show, as well as I think the writing and the character development, as Keith was saying, was tighter. Not just for Henry Cavill's role, but I think a lot of the secondary characters um, that were kind of half-assed featured in the first season, which makes for a better show. When when everybody's eating at the table, you know, you still got your main guy or gal also doing their thing. The show just feels more full. Um, the only the only nitpick I have about it is the final episode. I think. Like, oh, I wasn't know. big on the final battle either. Yeah, it's just like to me, just I don't know. Like, I felt like they blew their load <laughs> all right up until in a, in a penultimate episode before they got to the final episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm, I'm looking at the numbers here on Var- Variety Magazine, and this was still in their top 10 most watched Netflix, that is, most watched film, I'm sorry, series season to date in the top 10. So, um, despite you know, how number one may have, like, you know, rubbed people a certain way. Season two still garnered a lot of freaking views. And mm-hmm. that's a lot in our top ten. I think a lot. Days. I think a lot of that is Henry Cavill. I think Henry Cavill does a lot for this show. Even in his worst, most basic, grumbly demon hunter mode, I think he was elevate that kind of a role. Whereas I yeah. could see, like, we're... We were doing 80s reviews before. I could see like a fucking Brian Bosworth being in this role in like 1985, <laughs> right? And just and just just drowning how horrible like a secondary wrestler, uh, football player or something like that, just because he looks tough. Whereas Henry Cavill has it all. The guy can act, so I yeah, think he I does think. a great great job in this role. Um, I would say I agree, Keith, that he had a lot, he got a lot more character range in this second season because he got to be, you know, with his fathers and brothers and his history and Yasker and Yennefer and, and Siri, he got to do all of the whole thing. And he also got to be um, in love with Siri and then pissed at Siri and then have to almost kill Siri. You know, that whole, that whole thing was awesome. I thought that was a great, great storyline. The Yennefer's storyline overall, I liked. She was the best part of season one. Her, her mm-hmm. transformations and coming up within the witches thing, it was con. It was the hardest part because it was confusing because they did time jumping and they didn't tell you when they were time jumping. That's probably the worst thing about season one. But her storyline itself was a was like the weight and the carry of season one and series storyline in season one felt just it it like didn't get anywhere like it was like oh okay so she finally made it to she was supposed to find you know uh the witcher and she finally does and i know she goes to the elves and whatever but that never felt like it did much for the siri character here she gets a whole like i want to do this and she gets to step up to the plate and then she kind of gets made. She walks into a lion's den of these big, tough guys who have been through hell and survived the worst. And they see a princess walk in. And I thought that whole dynamic was great. And her basically turning them back in, into her ch- cheerleaders. You know what I mean? Mm. The like, witchers, yeah. Yeah, the the whole thing with her and the training, the training mm-hmm. path, yeah. that whole stuff was great. So that was great for her. Um, what did you guys think of this whole backstory, the secondary story of the um the, the af- after the fallout of the army with the elves mm-hmm. and yeah. the mages, and you know this was kind of part of the thing with Yennefer in there, but then you had this like this like witch demon 
and like the house that yeah. would, on legs. Like there was a lot of stuff going See, on. And just if I nitpick this, and and again, I actually went into Wikipedia. I'm sorry, I did not read the books, but I cheated. I went to Wikipedia and I actually looked up the whole references for this for the shows and um. And it's critical in the story of the actual books. I get it. But seeing the adaptation on, it on screen, to me, I didn't think it was as entertaining or engaging. Mm -hmm. um, understanding the whole history, how magic, there's the multiple universes that had a, the convergence, they collided. Mm -hmm. Sounds very marvel -y too. Um, <laughs> and, and, then, and then you had to, like, some people were trapped and some people wanted to get their realms to merge. And I get it. It's in the books. But I think you you spent so much time in the first season on these two or three little kingdoms and these characters, and in season two you kind of expand a little bit more, but you focus some of the characters. And now at the last two episodes, you're hastily throwing like, all right, so now we're giving you all of this stuff from the yeah exactly. <laughs> from the books that's gonna take us to season three, and it's like whoa 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 that is way too much to digest. Like if I didn't go on Wikipedia. I would have been like, what the fuck is this going on? Yeah, I, I you know? like the idea, like, they were doing the refugee thing with the elves, and they were driving out of their lands, and the, but the mages and the, the different factions of mages, and I'm like, okay, so there's interesting factions of mages and, and the war and the elves. In this okay. one realm, but now you have right. to introduce these other realms and how it impacts their multiverse. Or... So, yeah, exactly. So, Keith, what did you think of that secondary story? Did you Did you... Were you into the elves and the refugee thing? Did you yeah, like I, the I, expansion? What, what? I like. I feel like it added texture to the world that they were building. You know, like I like, like, like. Okay, these are bigger existential conflicts that are going on, and the stories, the story of our main character still has to exist within that. Like these are still things. Like it's just like something that's still big and prevalent like it's almost like the story of me of of heroes peak but yet like we're still living through the age of trump and you know all the stuff that's going on with corona and this that and this. so like i like that's what i'm saying like that's the kind of thing that was missing from the first season like there wasn't texture built around the world like you're not you're, the world that you're you're building you're not you're not adding things that aren't like immediately directed like directly affecting the story yeah, the the war at the end of of season one was cool, but I don't felt I didn't feel like I was brought to that point. It's a, as well, you know, the same way here at the end of the, they're like shoving this time stone multi world <laughs> theory, whatever multi world yeah. theory at me. The way at the end of season one they threw this oh there's this giant army war thing and you're like wait where what what what, what happened when did this mm. go down. So yeah, uh, yeah, it was a big info dump at the end, but I, I feel like go ahead, Keith. Sorry, I, but I think it at the, I, it was a big info dump at the end, oh, and okay. I think like it was just like a scramble for to create loose ends, right? As well, yeah. But, I was I was gonna add on to what Keith was saying before. I think they have some sort of like a, they have an agenda, not an agenda, like the storyboard for where the show is gonna go, how many seasons they have. And, if, and they're probably thinking at some point they need to say, okay, this is the end game. Like we have to conquer the, the human realm has to be able to conquer these extra multiverse beings by Siri. Again, spoiler from the references, Siri is critical to that. And the Witcher, Henry Cavill's character. So we have to get you to that point. But we've we've done like a good five episodes of good character development, story building from what you know thus far. But we have to remind you guys, it's a much bigger... It's like an Avenger, Not even Avengers 1. I think maybe Avengers 1, where you're like, okay, let's throw in a Thanos um, post credit scene, but let's make it two episodes. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, that's 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 not going to work, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a hard thing about coming from... Uh, I'm, I don't know where in the book series. I don't know if it was always like this, but it feels like, hey, I'm on the fifth book, and I've really kind of tapped out this world. Uh, let's make it so there's multiple planes of existence and they have to battle for, and you're like, hey, I'm not, you, you, but you make it more expansive. Like then you, you get, you give yourself more creative opportunities to expand. Yeah, I know. But it, it just like, it, it felt like it didn't feel like it was a natural, a natural fit to the way mm. the story was going within 
the television show. And yeah. I think a lot of the the things we see when we see translations from cert, from one media to another is people forget that you just can't pick up and move everything from one media to another because they have different things that people, different types of entertainment, di- different amounts of um, interest. And, you know, when someone picks up a book series, they're probably, once they get to book two, you're going to finish this. You're going to read a bunch of the series, right? And you have as many, as many worlds that you want to conquer in that. But when you have nine episodes, right? Nine episodes, right? It, you just don't have that much space. And I don't think, I don't think it was a good use of the time when I, I think you could do something cool within all of the stuff you've set up. Cause we never get what happening with the, the, the elves and the, the, the mage, the mage crew, the, the whole group of mages and whatever. Yeah. Like, which will be vital to, again, this is from reference. There'll be more vital as the show goes towards, I think their end game right now. They're just, you know, not focusing on that as much. It's like Lord of the Rings, right? Let's say Lord of the Rings, the, the fellowship of the ring was season one. The two tiles of season two and return to king of season three and season one fellowship of the ring you're introducing the main characters the hobbits the fellowship right and then you're introducing the the main backstory with um, sauron and gandalf and all that stuff but you're you're not just giving us a story we're just focusing on on the shire and the hobbits you have to say hey listen this is the end game this is what happened in the beginning of, of um the realm of sauron um, was conquering mankind and he yells, they all form and all of a sudden he lost the ring. They didn't do that in season. The equivalent of that in season one for the Witcher was not done. We they never explained to us what the, this convergence was up until this very season. They should have started in season one, giving us a backstory of what, why we even care about this whole realm, like what's happening in this universe. Yeah, I think for as much as focus, they focus in. Seems like- this season seemed like a whole different show. Like it was... Yeah, why do some people have magic and why do others don't have magic? Which, again, if you know the whole... There is a reason why some people are, are magic-born and not magic-born. I, I think for all, all of my love of Yennefer's story in season one, we have we had so much of it. It was, it was carrying the whole thing. But we could have used some time to really develop more of the world. Why... Why is this area attacking this area? And maybe I missed some of it. Maybe I just forgot it. And Five minute exposition. It's big... just something a bit more, a, a half an episode, to be honest. Like just to give me the feeling that I know what, who is where, and why, why they're, why they're, what their goal is. Oh my God! There are these stones that produce this resident that create magic that everybody wants to control. Hey, that gives me a reason for the South to attack the North or whatever it is, right? You know, it, I needed more to know, you know, why they attacked that village. I thought it was all about Siri. Well, it is about Siri, but do they know what Siri could do? No, they should have talked about. And, and why is it only the Witchers are able to like challenge these otherworldly beasts? You know, yeah, that the, stuff you're not going to know. Until didn't... You feel like they were so out of everybody else's league like because the half the witchers were just like chopping at it with swords like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't feel like a giant army with arrows and and magic users couldn't just have destroyed these things coming through the portal but i bet you if you knew that they they were drinking elder blood as part of the mutagen to give them their powers if you knew how important elder blood was in the first season so when it came out to like siri perhaps you know then all of a sudden they're like aha Big a big aha moment in your head. You connect the dots, and all of a sudden, well, they were do. There wasn't whole Elder Bud storyline about Siri and and trying to get her blood. And you're like, <laughs> like, okay, okay, you got me. What what is this about, right? And yeah, and you yeah. sort of got some of it. And I think they could have done a bit more with that. But some of that in season one to pull it across. Some of these threads. I think needed to be a bit longer in season one to mm. season two to 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 make this story flow a bit better. But overall, I've liked the series. I've, yep. I've enjoyed uh, the the main cast, the top top line cast has been great throughout the entire thing, and the secondary cast and characters were solid. 
We got a little bit of Yasker, you know, this season for the fun the of bard. it. The Bard. Yeah, right? The Bard, right? The Bard. character. But uh, not, not as much and not as good as season one. But, you know, I think... He's just not that not that important to what was going on. Sorry, Yasker. All right, why don't you guys give me a grade for uh, season two? Or do you want to do a grade for both seasons? Like the whole thing? Season one and season two. I think we graded together? season one before. I think we graded season one. Probably. Before. So do you want to just do a season two grade? Yeah. All right, uh, James, go ahead. Season two grade. I'm going to give it a B. Plus. I enjoyed it. Um, everything I. Everything I nitpick about was what kept me from giving an A minus. So um, I'll stick with my B plus. Okay, um, Keith. I think I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to go straight. I'm going to go a solid B plus, A minus B plus inside of there. Like it's quality. It was good. It is good. I'm going to go a little bit lower. I'm just going to say a B, just because of that last like multi verse thing. I was like ah. This didn't didn't land with me right, but Henry Cavill, uh, you know, really carries this thing. The 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 boar guy in the the first episode, that guy with the boar makeup, that was mm. all good. That was all great. Stuff. Oh, shout out to the dwarves! We finally get to see dwarves in this world, or I think they're dwarves. Oh, yeah. They're little people. You know, I have to be careful, little people. Yeah, they they had they had some some good stuff, some <laughs> some good side characters and whatnot. Um, but I really think Henry Cavill and, uh, what's her name? Um, Anya Chalotra. Oh, um, Yennefer. Yennefer. Anya Chalotra. They really carry this, this show. She's superb. Hope to see her many other things. All right. That's it. That's our grades for Witcher season two. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sign off now. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, Keith, James, thank you for joining me. Uh, thank Brooks, you for having us. Thank you for joining us. Everybody, come to our socials. Uh, uh, Heroes Peak at Heroes Peak. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you prefer. TikTok, Facebook, all that stuff. And interact with us. We're always starting new dialogue about anime, about geek culture. Eventually. We're even talking about sports these days. Chris and I um, mostly <laughs> we'll That's right. throw in a couple comments here and there. You know, feel free to engage with us. We look forward to that. Hit the button, hit subscribe, like, five stars, all of the above. Thank you very much for joining us. Everybody have a great week.